Hey there everybody, this is Dave with Blueberry Games again. Uh, today we're going to be doing uh, a uh, Kraken Packs episode where I'm going to actually for the first time be able to do this while I'm actually opening a release day product. So it's day one of the release for Theros Beyond Death, the actual release, not a pre-release. I actually got the product in on time and I'm going to be making a video of an unboxing of the Theros Beyond Death booster box. So I hope you enjoy. All right, so let's get started here. Now, what happens after this will determine what happens next. So, what I mean by that is, uh, my needs and wants are two different things. To get the decks finished that I want to finish for the Commander series, I need two Planeswalkers. And I hope I at least get one of them today so that I can, you know, get those finished. So, let's hope we go ahead and get them. Uh, I think I pointed this out last time with the Theros Beyond Death. There's a lot of air in these packs again. And these are not the full tab packs it looks like. Well, maybe it is. It is. They are the full tab packs. They don't pull very well because there's too much air in them, but they did pull. Now, I've not opened any of these yet, so this is the first pack, and it looks like they are the same uh, same way that the uh, Throne of Eldraine packs were, where I think the rare is going to be in the front. So, uh, and it is. So, the first one we open is an Elspeth Conqueror's Death, and it looks like the hollow foil stamping is off, just like on the other ones. <laughs> I want to point something out to you. My biggest interest in this set is actually the uh, the basic lands. A lot of people were complaining about these looking kind of like Pokemon uh, energy. I'm okay with that just because they look a little cooler. But other than that, I'm okay with that. But So yeah, that's our first one. First rare, Elspeth Conquers Death. And it's a saga, in case you guys didn't see it. Here, let me zoom in a little bit. So... Alright, I'm not going to spend too, too much time on any of the commons and uncommons at the moment, just because we all know what they are, we've all read them, all that stuff. Yeah, it's hard to tell if they're pull tabs. If they are pull tabs, they didn't really do a good job on it, just because they don't seem to be going all the way down, but whatever, it works. Alright. Now, my biggest interest in this set, other than, you know, a couple of the Mythic Rares and a couple of the Rares, was, uh, I do want a couple foil ones of those. And I know that they're guaranteed in, um, in the Collector's Edition packs, but I kind of was hoping to get a couple in the regular packs, too. Alright, so we got a foil Chainweb Arachner, and the Rare is Nadir Kraken. And let's see a couple of the uncommons. We'll just go through them real quick. There are a few uncommons I'm looking to get. I, I mean, I'm always looking to get. When a new set comes out, I'm, I'm basically looking for stuff for the decks that I make for people. That's basically what it's for. Uh, and then to do more decks for a series, depending on what the series is. Alright, so this was just a filler. Nothing good in there. Alright, Dream Trawler is the next rare. So, so far, I haven't really gotten anything all that good from the first three packs, but there wasn't, as far as what I could tell, um, <laughs> Field of Ruins is always good to get. Uh, this set didn't have, like, a lot of the bomby stuff, or a lot of the really, like, overpowered stuff, like, uh, like, uh, Throne of the Dream looked like it had. Or the original Theros set itself. The original Theros set had a lot of bombs in it. Ooh, an island. We all know that if you can't tell by my background, uh, or at least my playmat, that I am a blue player and a fan of blue. So, it's always nice to get one of those. Storm's Wrath is my next rare. Um... It is reminiscent, and wow, look at how far off the foil hollow stamps really are. It's kind of crazy how how far off they are. Um, 
Storm's Wrath is reminiscent of... Uh, what the hell is the red card? It was the red card in in the original Theros series. Uh, I can't remember off my head. Please forgive me with the MS. I'm still having memory issues lately. Um, they're really getting worse. Uh, what was that card? Uh, it did three damage to everything. So, same thing. All right. Eat to Extinction and a full aspect of Manticore. Or what came out of that pack? Uncommon wise, let's see. Nothing that stands out to me right away, like a, a field of ruin or anything like that. Right, next pack. It's weird having these pull tabs, especially when they don't work. <laughs> I mean, they work, but they don't work as well as I think they were hoping. All right. I'm going to move these over here. All right. Grave Breaker Lamia, and again, the hollow stamping is off by a little bit. Uh, and then the uncommons, real quick. You know what? I'm just going to rearrange these a little bit differently because the rares have less in them. So we're going to put the common pile here. Excuse me, I'm having a, uh, a rough start to my day. Uh, I woke up really late today, so. All right, next pack. Ooh, a reflection token. All right, foil Nyxborn Marauder. And At Atris, the Oracle of Hath Truths, is the rare slot. It's a rare, rare, whatever you, you want to call it. And some comments. Alright. Let's see what else we get here. Now, what I'm hoping for is a Heliod or a uh, uh, the black blue planeswalker, <laughs> a Heliod the uh, the god, or a black the black blue planeswalker uh, Ashiok. I'm hoping for because I want to complete out the Aloro deck and the Alela deck. All right, Hactros the Unscarred is the rare here. And some of the uncommons, or the uncommons. So far, I don't even think I've gotten a mythic yet. So, and trash. Woohoo, another temple, because they didn't print enough temples. That's never a good sign. I'm, again, I've said this many times before. I think the temples were a cop-out for a land to be, you know, put in the rare slot. <laughs> At best, that's, like, an uncommon in my eyes. But I'm not wizards. I don't make the choices. And uh, I just thought that the temples were just not good. <laughs> sure, scrying one's good. And having a dual land is good. But when it comes into play tapped, it, it just, I don't know. That's just me. Uh, Erebos' Intervention. Exile up to twice, target cards in a graveyard. Or, yeah, it's... Eh. Like I said, uh, I wasn't all... I was extremely, extremely excited. Now, Whirlwind Denial, I'm going to tell you right now, that should have been in a rare slot. Uh, I had a conversation about this on the, uh, the EDH uh, group on Facebook. Uh... A lot of people didn't quite understand this. I want to explain this real quick. Uh, for each spell and ability your opponent's control, its controller must pay for. That is basically to prevent win cons. That's what this card is for. It's for win cons. It's for people who are playing, say, you know, Storm or uh, one of the uh, a deck that uses uh, the uh, activated triggers, activated abilities triggering multiple times and all that stuff. That's what that's for. It's to prevent a win, not to win a game. It's it's the anti-win. 
card. And I like it. It's probably one of the better counters they've made in quite a while. A lot of people are trying to compare it to another card. Uh, I think I did get into an argument with one of the guys on the page. Uh, they weren't understanding what I was telling them, which was that this card is good in the aspect of it can prevent a win. But not everybody gets it. Another temple. Now, if, if now here's what I'm going to tell you about this so far in this box. If the temples instead were, say, Shocklands, I'd be happy about it. But unfortunately... Alright, so my first... You know, non-regular card is Daxos. Since he is a little off by the coloring, which means not coloring, but like his format is is alternate. Not frame or anything like that. It's just he's black and white with more black than white, which is different. I sorry, I can't seem to remember what they called them. My head is not fully there today. Again, I'm having an actual MS Flare day today, so please bear with me. Uh, one of the other cards I'm trying to get my hands on is the Nyx Lotus. But I'm not looking too good on that right now. Uh, Cetessian... No. Cetessian Champion is the rare for this one. And a Grey Merchant. i got to be honest with you. I was kind of happy that they announced that they were doing Grey Merchant again. I was kind of sad because I have so many of them set aside for like sale purposes. That I was hoping that they'd never be reprinted because it's actually one of the better cards from like as far as uh, the Thera sets I guess now you can say. It's one of the better cards in all the sets. It just It's a win con. It's a really good card. <laughs> but Lo and behold, they, they saw that too, and they printed it again. So. Alright. This one's got Enigmatic Incarnation. At the beginning of your end step, you may sacrifice another enchantment. If you do, search your library for a creature card with converted mana cost equal to 1 plus that. Okay. Um, I even play an enchantment deck. The problem is it's in the wrong colors. And some uncommons there. Yeah, these uh, pull tabs are really throwing me off. It makes it easier because I don't have to sit there and struggle with opening the pack, but it's just really weird. Islands, islands, islands. Alright, my first mythic rare is... Instead of getting a Heliod, I got Sun's, uh, Elspeth, the Sun's nemesis. So, not upset about getting an Elspeth. Uh, I have no use for it currently unless <laughs> I, uh, I don't know. I, I Maybe I can put it in the Aloro deck because it does gain you, you know, gain the life, but I don't know. I was hoping for Els uh, for Heliod. So, so far, I'm not getting lucky with it. <laughs> I mean, Elspeth is... And Elspeth... Plan any Planeswalker is great. But not when you want one specifically and you get another. But that's always the way the case goes when it comes to opening these packs. Now, realize, I also... I've bought a case of these. So, I've got a case. So, I've got plenty of opportunities. And look at that. A third temple... I'm, I'm not very happy getting those at all. Not at all. I just, you know... Uh, and I guess that's why I'm getting so many. Usually what you put out there in the universe, you get back. I don't like them at all. I never use them. <laughs> they just sit there and collect dust in my collection. And apparently I'm not the only one because when I go to sell them, because I don't want them, they never sell at all. And I put them at a pretty good price, so... Alright, that's trash. Alright. Foil. Omen of the Sun. I do like these omens. These omens are good for, uh... For a couple things. <laughs> when you're doing a, uh... An enchantment deck, like Alela, for a commander, it's good. When you're doing a Moldratha deck, they're good because they're enchantments and they're permanent, so you can bring them back every turn. Uh... So, all in all, they're actually pretty decent. Some of them are okay. This one's one of the better ones, because at least it creates creatures. Uh, some of them are not good, like the black one. Alright, our rare for this deck is a Waybreak Hippocamp. 
<laughs> Hippo camp. All right, and the uncommons. Under Road Dreams. I have to tell you a story. I know that back in the day, and, and people won't know this or remember this, but this used to be an uncommon <coughs> from a set called Legends. And then they turned it into a rare, which made more sense for people. The card was worth a bunch when it was first printed. And now it's in the uncommon slot, just sitting there. All uncommony. So, it's just funny. I just think it's funny, because... It was upshifted, and then it was downshifted. It's like, make up your mind, wizards. Wake up, make it up. I guess the effect isn't powerful enough to be a rare anymore. Alright. A Kraken for my token. Now, as this is, I guess, considered to be a full art land, right? I have them, all my full art lands set aside. Alright, the Acrone War. Instead of the Antiquities War. Alright, let me see. Alright, those were the uncommons. It's not even a pull tab, per se. It's literally just a a cut in the top of the packaging. <laughs> Alright, and next we've got... Timorat Calls the Dead. Alright. And I think you'll notice a small difference between this video and previous videos. Uh, in previous videos, I believe I was reading every rare off. Or every mythic off. I decided to stop doing that. And to get the video to go a little faster. Uh, if you guys need to look at something or want to look at something. The, the whole list... Of cards is available, so I don't really need to read them off to you. But if you did, it's pretty simple. Just pause the video. I try to keep it there for at least like five seconds, so that if you need to pause it, you can pause it in a position where the card can be read. All right, all right. Mythic number two, Keothis, the wrong god. Uh, it's it's like a cosmic like joke that whatever I announce, I want, I don't get. So, Kyothis, God of Destiny. I will read this. It's 3 to cash for a 5, 4 indestructible. Uh, as long as your devotion to red and green is less than 7, it's not a creature, so it's an enchantment. Uh, it's always an enchantment, though. And at the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, exile target card from a graveyard, and if it's a land, add green or red. Otherwise, gain 2 life, and it deals to damage to each opponent. Um, so, going forward, I don't think I had a green-red... Commander deck on, I guess, Q for being made. Uh, I didn't really see anything I liked. That would be the closest thing to a possibility, but I'm not sure yet. But I did put out a list of the ones I wanted to make. And if, you know, need be, I'll list, I'll actually do that here as well. All right. For thirst for meeting, and oh look, a fourth temple. Because guess what? God hates me. <laughs> Apex hand hardened in the forge. It's actually a pretty cool looking card. And you know, <laughs> if this were any other set that had good lands, like for instance, you know, fetch lands or shock lands, this box would have been amazing. But because it's temples, they're gonna give me. Like, every other pack, a temple. Back in the day when we used to open actual dual lands from revised packs, we used to open up, you know, every other pack, and it was crap back then. And now it's like, if you get one of those, you're gold. So maybe I'm looking at it the wrong way. Alright, Idyllic Tutor. Now this is a card I wanted, and only because I didn't have one. I have every other tutor in the game except for an Idyllic, because I wasn't actually playing at the time that it originally came out. <clears throat> so what I'm going to end up doing is, I have Alayla, and Alayla needs this, so that's a good addition, that's good to have. Now if I could only get the Heliod, then maybe I'll be in business and I can finish the Alayla deck, even though it'll be before the Aloro deck. But, again, we'll see. It all comes down to the packs. So far I've gotten the opposite of every Mythic that I needed.
<laughs> All right, Underworld Breach with the foil hollow stamp still off. Like, it's pretty bad. All right, and the Uncommons. We're almost two thirds of the way done. So I think I have one to two more mythics available left that it'll give me. Alright, so my foil was a foil rare. The foil rare is a Thrix the Sudden Storm. Legendary creature, 4 5, flash flying. Uh, when you cast a spell, convert a key mana cost 5 or greater, it costs 1 less to cast and can't be countered. It's an interesting uh, addition to a lot of different things that you could do. You could even make it a commander because it is a legendary creature. Uh, and then the rare in the pack is Tectonic Giant. So. Yeah, not too exciting. Yeah, I'm not very, again... I was I was more excited for Theros than I was for even Throne of Eldrain or any of the other like in the last couple of years it was the one I was most excited about. I liked the original Theros packs or the original Theros cards. And I was excited for this, and for some reason, as I'm opening these packs, I did read the spoiler list. I did look at all the cards. <laughs> I wasn't all that you know jacked up or excited about them. And I'm looking at them now, and I'm like, yeah, there's a reason. I haven't got anything I want yet, anyway. And a foil soul guide lantern. All right, and we're gonna look at <laughs> mythic number three, Polychronos the Unchained. It is a four to cast zero zero, which is always great. Four to cast zero zero. Um, now uh, it enters the battlefield with six plus one plus one counters on it, so it's a four to cast six six. Uh, if it escaped, it escapes with 12 instead. Uh, if damage will be dealt to him while it has a plus one plus one counter on it, prevent all the damage and just remove that many counters. And you can have it fight another creature. So, <laughs> that was the mythic. It's an interesting theory. It's a legendary creature. It, it, the problem is that you can't use it as a commander because you can only kind of really get used out of it from the grave. All right. <laughs> Altar of the Pantheon I want to actually go over. Uh, your devotion to each color and each combination of colors is increased by one. And you can tap to add one man of any color. If you control a god, demigod, or a legendary enchantment, you gain a life. I uh, <clears throat> I may actually have use for this. It, it's kind of a mana rock. And it kind of helps with your... I mean, devotion itself isn't going to be that important in Commander for some things. Uh, any of the decks that I have put together, it doesn't really rely on that. However, it can if I get the Nyx Lotus. And it can if I decide to add different things into the deck. But it all depends on what I get here. So, let's see. Oh, look. My first repeat happens to be Heliod's Intervention. I believe it was a repeat. Isn't that the first card I got from this? No, it wasn't. Oh, okay. Alright, Heliod's Intervention. And destroy X target artifacts or enchantments, or target player gains twice X life. <laughs> and again, look at the hollow foil stamp off by a little bit. Another Field of Ruin. Field of Ruin is good for uh, helping keep pain in the butt lands at bay when it comes to Commander. So I believe that means I'm down to probably, maybe just one Mythic Rare left. And of course I need two, so I'm not going to be able to complete one of the decks. And it looks like I might not be able to complete either of the decks without it. Alright, Erasure the Endless Web. Whenever an opponent casts an instant of sorcery, create a 1-2 spider. <laughs> and Uncommons... I honestly, there are a couple of other cards. I want the green rare that um, essentially lets you drop double lands and add double mana or whatever it is. I forget his name. He looks pretty interesting too. And I am trying to get him on a green deck with uh, 
the Locust of Mana. So, I'd like to get any deck started out of this, but it's not like it's going to happen. That's his Oracle. That's going to take a second to read, huh? Ah. Timurit, the Chosen of Death. Ah. Come on, God Pack. Literal God Pack. Mm, nope. Here is... Kunoros, the Hound of Athreos. He's got a lot of abilities. He's actually a good card. Uh, 3 to KS 3 3 for Vigilance, Menace, Lifelink, and Creature Cards and Graveyards can't enter the battlefield and can't KS from Graveyard. So, <laughs> he's pure hate. And 3 to KS for a 3 3 is not horrible either. So. We're getting down to nitty gritty here, guys. It doesn't look like it's going to happen today. Let's see. Oh. Now, it's always nice. The problem I have is... That's weird. It gave me both. Um, So, it's a foil. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's kind of funny. When I opened up my... Uh, uh, the foil... The, oh, I'm sorry, not the foil. The uh, Horiz Modern Horizon sets. The boxes. I ordered three of them. And in those, all I wanted was the Full Art Snow Island. I ended up getting a Full Art Snow Forest. And of course, the first box, that, or the first one I opened of these new ones, is a forest. I'm wondering if it's skewed a little bit <laughs> towards green. So, at least it's nice, it's cool, it's shiny. It's not as impressive as I was hoping, because I was hoping for an island, but it is what it is. Alright, next up, Dalakos, Crafter of Wonders. They are putting a lot of legends in these sets now. Um, so, apparently they're trying to cater more towards the casual commander players just to, by making things legendary. <laughs> Alright. And Elspis Nightmare. Okay. Yeah, I was kind of hoping. I know that uh, the collector's packs come with, like, <laughs> I think two guaranteed per pack. So they're not worth anything. <coughs> and I'm sure you can get them from other sources that it'll just be included in there. I was hoping to get one naturally, though. Alright, up next we've got Nightmare Shepherd. Flying when not another non taken creature is you control dies, exile it, and make a copy of it. That's a 1 1 nightmare. Daxos. He's actually a pretty good card. That Daxos, the uncommon Daxos from this. That's good. Uh, it's like a, a Soul Sisters variant, I guess you could say. <coughs> but it's upon two different triggers, I think, entering and leaving. Or. Entering and dying. Oh, look. Another Thrix. My first repeat only because the other one was a foil. Alright, so... We're really getting down to it. And I haven't seen a... A Nyx Lotus or whatever it's called. I haven't seen... Heliod, I, I don't know if I'm going to actually get any of the, out of the entire set, any of the cards I needed to finish any of the decks I have. And that's kind of sad. Alright, Foil Rumbling Sentry. Oh, there we go. <laughs> okay. So, I am, with this, most likely going to be able to complete the Alela deck. So that's a good design. Uh, for those of you that don't know yet, uh, this is Infinite Combo Man. Uh, Halod Suncrowned, 3 to cast for a 5-5 five, five indestructible. Uh, he's old, not a creature unless your devotion to white is 5. Whenever you gain life, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target creature or enchantment you control. And for 2, another target creature gains lifelink until end of turn. For those of you that live under a rock, uh... 
Walking Ballista and this is Infinite Combo. You give Walking Ballista Life Link with at least two or more counters on it. Every time you take a counter off, you ping somebody. When you gain life, you get to put a plus one plus one counter back on it. <coughs> so, and that's going in the Layla deck. Uh, I would like to get a second one. Uh, not going to happen, obviously, because they never have repeat in boxes of Mythics. However, I'd like to put it in the Aloro deck as well, but not for the same combo, just for the fact that it's gained life. <coughs> not going to happen, so I'll just go on without it. I, however, do want an Ashiok for that deck, because I've turned it into like a Super Friends style deck. That's his intervention. Probably one of the better of the interventions. Uh, look at the top X card your library. Put two of them in your hand. The rest on the bottom of your library. Or counter target spell. Unless the controller play, pays twice X. So it's not a bad counter. It's not a bad draw. You know. It's kind of a little bit of both. So. Alright. What else do we got here? We are down to. Looks like three or four packs. What do we got? We got three packs. So. So, stinging bloatfish, or lionfish, is uh, rare. Nylea's intervention, search your library for up to X land cards, if you have them, put them into your hand, and shuffle your library, or deal to X twice damage to each creature with flying. <coughs> I actually really like this card a lot. I don't play green yet in Commander, I have a couple of decks in, in progress. I like this card because of the one word here. Let me let me block the rest of it. Land cards. Land cards. Do you see that? Land cards. Why is that important, you ask? Well, because searching for basic lands is so passe. No, just kidding. Uh, because uh, there are there is an ability to actually pull off a a combo with that itself and be a win con. Uh, because you can search for non basic lands, it means you can search for special lands to actually search out the land combo win cards. Ooh, that's foil too. And I'll explain that in one second while I figure out what this is. <laughs> this is a foil alternate frame, I guess, of Renata Called to the Hunt. It's only an uncommon, but it looks pretty cool, actually. That's why I stopped on that. <laughs> that's really cool. Now, is that foil? Yeah, that's foil. Okay. The uh, rare from here is Arkin of the Sun's Grace. Uh, the Pegasus Leader, I guess. <laughs> Pegasi Leader, whatever you want to call it. Um, so anyway, back to what I was saying. Some lands in combination with each other can win you a game. Uh, we all know about Thespian Stage and uh, the land that turns into a 2020 indestructible creature. Uh, it's not a, an, an actual win win, but I mean, think about that for a second. On third turn, you can get both of those out because it's green, so you can ramp into that. <laughs> so, I'm just saying, I'm a fan just because it makes land decks a little bit more viable. And no, I did not get the Ashiok. So, the last. That was last pack. It has Woe Strider in it. It creates an 0-1 goat. <laughs> it's kind of an unusual card, in my opinion, that black's making goats. I get sacrificial lambs and all that, but why would it be a goat and not a lamb? Alright. <laughs> so, that is the full extent of the box. I'll go through some of the rares as I, you know, um, explain to me, explain to you guys what's coming up next. So, uh, now that I got the uh, <laughs> the case of the Theros boxes, uh, I got six boxes for your viewing pleasure as well as my opening pleasure. Um, I'm going to go ahead and since I got the Heliod, finish out the... Uh, actually, and because I got a deal like Teeter, I'm probably going to finish out the uh, Alayla deck. Do my second video on that. And the first one, usually when I do it before and after, I have a first version and a second version. Uh, on the before and afters, because this deck is going to be technically new and not, uh, the before version of that Alela deck will actually be the unboxing of the Alela Precon. 
just because that's where it started from, so that's technically the before. Uh, and then I'll do the after, hopefully this week, and we'll get that one straightened out and ready to go. I'm, I'm only short by like four or five cards, and I wanted to see if I could get the Heliod first. And since I got the Idealic Tutor, which it's an enchantment and an artifact deck, I'm going to put both Idealic and uh, Enlightened Tutor in. So it'll help the deck out. And that means that I'm going to finish it. So, with that being said, uh, please do me the favors that I ask you every time. Like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, I'm trying to get better. I'm trying to make these videos better for you guys. I know that it's hard to do when, you know, I have literally just a phone and no other you know, no other technology to go by, but please, like, subscribe, share, uh, send it out there to your friends who like to watch unboxings, uh, and also like Commander, uh, I've joined the Facebook group, I'm trying to put it out there that I do videos like this, and, uh, get some subscribers, I'm trying to get to 100 guys, that's all I need is, is, is about 39 more or something like that, and I'm there, so, please give me a, you know, give me a little bit of help, uh, so, well, uh, that's all the time I got for today. Uh, this was the Theros Beyond Death unboxing. I hope you enjoyed and uh, have a great day.